So in the spirit of having some fun with secondary dominance, we'll turn to one of the first ways in which we looked at them uh, in terms of being able to highlight or ornament a, a, a diatonic chord other than one. So what we'll do is we'll take this progression, we'll treat each of the middle chords here, the six chord, the four chord, and the five, five, seven chord, uh, and we'll treat each of them to a secondary dominant. But before we do, let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like first. So again, a very simple progression, of course, starting from the tonic, prolonging it by the six, and then moving to our four as a predominant chord, then dominant back to our one. Uh, notice how the bass uh, moves down in thirds, right, at first here before kind of crawling back up. And that's uh, organized that way here on purpose, just to give us a really nice smooth bass line as we're going to construct our secondary dominant chords. So what I'd like to do is I'd like you to pause here and try to see if you can create these chords uh, yourself. And what we're going to do, of course, is we're going to require a secondary dominant of some kind of six, another secondary dominant of four, and then another one of five, okay? And I'd like to see if you can do that while creating very smooth bass line, kind of that's, you know, kind of hinted at, outlined here for us. Okay, so go ahead and pause and uh, give, give that a shot. All right, so here's what I came up with. I came up with five, four, three chords, a secondary dominance on the way to both six and to four, and that permits a stepwise motion in the bass, right, from the one chord to the five, four, three of six, to the six proper, then to five, four, three of four, down to the four, and then as I get ready to leave the predominant area on my way to the dominant, I can kind of highlight that by having this chromatic ascent in the bass, uh, resulting in my dominant chord, and then of course my tonic, okay? And and just kind of notice some of the fun that that, uh, that the alto gets to have in this as well. It kind of gets to do this nice chromatic ascent up to the B flat, right? The B flat of course being the chordal seventh of the five, four, three of six, and then it just kind of slides its way down in a far less chromatic way. So that's kind of fun too. Um, I want you to notice something from the original progression. Notice that the soprano, in order to get from the F to the D, right, both I guess in the original and, and in this one here, it jumps down a third. Well, when we had that in the original progression, that actually created this uh, th this direct fifth with the alto, which isn't the smoothest thing in the world, but notice that through the intervention of the secondary dominant here, what I've been able to do is actually have the soprano approach that, uh, th th that D while the alto is kind of holding a common tone here. So this nice oblique motion, a lot smoother, and so that when we finally progress to the five chord, right, now it's oblique motion again. Again, this time with the soprano holding a common tone. So some really nice uh, smoothness is afforded us uh, there by, in this case, a secondary dominant. So now let's listen to this progression. <laughs> 